there's a hat in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. There's a hat in my bucket, dear Liza. Ah. Well, that means you should wear it, dear John, dear John, dear John. Second first, same as the first. We're heading on to Bucket Hats today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mikey from The Crochet Crowd, and thank you so much for joining our channel today. I'm here to inspire you and create magic with your crochet hook. Are you ready to play? Oh yeah, sounds good. Welcome and let's begin our journey, Flower Power Crochet Bucket Hat. Now I know that I'm a tight crocheter and I can tell this and I'm gonna show you how I know this as well, is that it's suggesting a five millimeter size aged crochet hook but with Lily Sugar and Cream I tend to be a little bit loose. And so what I have to do is compensate for the hook. So it says here that the motif equals four inches and so the motif is used here in the hat. So what I decided to do and, and I'm gonna suggest for this for you as well is that I suggest that you do the motif first and therefore you can determine whether your hook size is going to be okay and therefore when you lay it down see it's four inches. So if I would have used a five millimeter size H knowing that I'm loose with this uh, style of yarn the, this would be much bigger and the hat won't fit. So what I'm going to do is and I'm gonna go out of order in this one here. I'm going to show you how to make the motif. You need to make a total of six of these and then I haven't cleaned up my edges because I did this during stitch night last night and what I need to do is then start bringing them together and it's gonna be a nice tight join like you see it in the model sample and we're gonna be doing that first and then we're gonna cover the top and the bottom to bring it all together as a, a unit. So it needs three balls of Lily Sugar and Cream. The main color was Robin's Egg. Contrast A is hot green and then soft ecru is then this and this part of the flower. So because I can't use white on a white background I decided to use these colors instead. This means I'm going to jump right here first and we're gonna do the motif rings and we're gonna be doing this. So we need to do the ring that goes around the hat and this is the diagram for it. In mine the rose, a uh, rose pink is in the flower. The middle is the lilac and then the robin's egg is around. So those are the three colors that I'm using today. So let's grab our hook, whatever decide, uh, whatever hook you decided to use and let's begin to make the motif and show you how to do that first. Let's begin and I'm doing my four millimeter size F crochet hook and I'm going to put this on and I've already done all my motifs so I'm just gonna show you a sample of it. So we're just going to chain four. So one, two, three and four and slip stitch to the beginning chain and yarn over pull through and now you have the center ring of your motif like that. I want you to treat this straggler as if, as if it's part of the outside of the ring and we're gonna be going into round number one next. These motifs don't take any time at all so just chain up four. So one, two, three. That's technically a double crochet and the fourth one is a chain one space. Around the ring I want you to double crochet into the ring and after you completed a double crochet I need you to chain one and then double crochet back into the ring and then chain one and I need you to do this so that you can count 12 of these which includes this one. So please do that all the way around the ring and I'll be back in just a moment. Once you can count 12 of these spokes of these posts and you chain one you just a slip stitch it to the third chain up of that beginning so that there's a chain one space. Now we're going to finish this off and you may want to take your time in weaving in your ends and with the tapestry needle in order to do that. Okay so let's just cover on how to do that. So I'll just show it to you one time. So we just slam it into a tapestry needle and just crochet today. My tongue hurts today so I don't know why but I'm kind of just speaking with irregularity today. Okay once you got through the first time you're gonna go through a second. Noticing that I'm doing this on the back I never said so but you might have saw me turn it over. So back and forth a total of three times. If you crocheted over top of the starting uh, trail, uh, the starting strand you can safely cut that down too. Now I'm gonna give you a piece of advice for round number two which is not in the pattern but I'll leave that to your decision what you would like to do. In round number two when you crochet these petals technically it should have looked like this on the back. I haven't woven in my tails yet but um, so it should look like this. 
but I know with this particular stitch that when you do it, it has a raised bump and that may be something that you may be interested in. So if you're going to want the raised bump to face out, so it gives you texture to the outside of your hat, then you will want to do what I'm about to show you. If you don't want the texture to your hat and you want it to stay flat, then you will do what the pattern is suggesting. So here's what I suggest for you. So here's the question. This is the right side of the work. This is the wrong side. If I crochet the next round using the right side of this, those bumps that you may love will be on the inside of the hat and that's what the pattern is suggesting. If you want those bumps to face out to give your hat texture, turn this around and put it to the back side as or the, or the wrong side facing you and beginning and that's what I'm going to suggest but you can determine what you would like to do. Put your yarn onto the hook and go into any one of these and just yarn over and pull through. We're going to begin a beginning cluster and you're going to chain two and in the cluster here what are in the space you want to place in um, basically um, two double crochet together. Watch. You're gonna yarn over going into the space. Go right up over top of that straggler to trap it and yarn over pull through two and do it one more time. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two. Once you see the three uh, um, loops on the hook for this beginning one, you will yarn over and pull through all three and then chain one. You will then go to the next space and then do a regular cluster. So just wrap the hook and going into the space, pull through, pull through two and hold and do that three times. So that was once, twice, and then three times is a charm. And once you have that done, pull through all three. Chain one and move along. So I'll just quickly just show you one more. So these don't take any time at all if you're familiar with crochet. And you're going to slam these in. And if you take a peekaboo at the back, you're going to notice is that the texture for the stitch is on this side. So therefore when I go to um, crochet this on, or sorry, when I go to uh, wear this, these exterior uh, bumps will appear on the outside of the hat which will give it texture. So please go all the way around. There should be a total of these 12 cluster petals that you'll see and I'll be right back in a moment. So it may appear to be buckling when you go to do all the way around but don't worry about it. Just calm down. <laughs> It'll work out. You watch. So we do the last one. We chain one and then we join it to the top of the first cluster that you made. Okay that's it. So let's get rid of this yarn. I already showed you how to weave in your ends and I'll be back in just a moment and I'll show you another trick. You like tricks right? <laughs> so in the tutorial this is where we finished. Okay so this here is the wrong side of the middle and this here is the right side of number two. So to finish this you're gonna wanna turn this over. So if you decided not to turn over to do the petals then this is the right side and this will be the right side and you will not see the texture that is showing here. So you decided what you wanted to do. We're going to begin our final round which is so easy it's not even funny and you just wanna slam your hook in between any one of these clusters that you did. And you wanna just join it. Okay and I'm gonna give you a little tip. It is a tutorial so I'm allowed to, to give tips. It says to chain three and that's normal. When I do this join I always feel like that's a height of one chain so I'm just gonna only chain two. That's what I did on my sample. Now in the same space I want you to put in two more double crochet. Noticing that I'm um, just that's bothering me a little bit here. Let me just trim that. I didn't trim it so well. So noticing that I'm going over top of the straggler. So you do that one. Now you're going to go into the next space on the other side of that other cluster there and you'll put in three double crochet. So each one of the sides has three double crochets on the flat side. The next one is the corner. In the corners you want to apply three double crochet. So one, two, and three and only chain one to actually turn the corner. And in the same space put in three more double crochets. This is officially a corner. The designer wants us to keep this tight so that's why it's not a chain two in the corner if you're familiar with granny squares. 
So now that the corner is done I told you that there's only two pieces of the of these that will be on their own on a side. So the next one is going to be three double crochets. Noticing that I did not chain one between them. Nice and tight. That's the goal today. So I have one and then I gotta do the next one. So there will be three double crochets there. And then what's going to be in the one after that? Can you tell me? Did you say the next one is a corner? Hopefully so. So the next one is a corner. So then you put in your three double crochet, chain one and three double crochet. And I need you to complete this all the way around and this is the final round of this motif. And I'll be right back in a moment. When you come all the way around the last one is a corner and you'll notice that anyway hopefully. <laughs> and you're going to chain one to turn and then put in the final side of that corner. And you're going to join it. I did a chain two if you remember. So you'll join it to the top of if you did a chain three join it to the top of chain three. In my case I'll join it to the top of chain two. And that will conclude that. Now you wanna clean up your loose ends that you will have and you will notice because of what I did the texture is on the outside here. That would have been on the inside of the hat. And just clean up your loose ends that you may have and we're gonna talk about putting the ring together next. So now we're going to join this and make the motif ring. So basically we're putting all the six together. So we're just gonna start and you just start lining them up like ducks and then you just start joining and then eventually once you have all six joined you'll join the first one to the last one to create the ring. So to do this what I'd recommend just grabbing a, t uh, a strand. Okay we're gonna sew this together on the back loops only. And what this is going to do is going to make a beautiful edge. On the one side I want you to create a slip knot and on the other you're going to slip in your tapestry needle. The secret to doing nice joins is to work on the back loops only. So here you see the good sides and so you wanna go to and start in that chain one space in a corner. And instead of going through both loops as a regular stitch I want you just to focus on the back loop. So the one closest to the table. So this is the front of the project. And now this one here you wanna focus on the back loop again the one closest to the table. And you wanna come up the other side. Okay so you're only focusing on the back loops that are closest to the, the behind. So and what this will do is it will create an invisible join and you're going to pull through and when you pull through and you see the slip knot approach slip the needle through. And what that will do is that it will lock that into position and pull. And you can leave that straggler in behind the work. Now fold it up like a sandwich and just go and do the next back loop and the next back loop. And what you're going to do is you're gonna follow this all the way down. This is called the whip stitch. And so once you get that one done you'll do the next two. So you follow this all the way down to the chain one space of the next corner and all you need to do is just end it there. So I'll let you uh, do that and I'll be right back on the other side at the corner on this side. So I'm now just come all the way to the other corner. So you're gonna open it up and it will look like it's indentated. So don't worry about it. Things will straighten out. Things are meant to be tight on this thing. So once you're all the way down to this side just turn it over and just secure this. So what I like to do is that on the back I like to put a knot close to where I finished. So just let it knot itself. Then I like to run the uh, needle through the back side only. So if I turn this over I should never see that going through. So I'm gonna pull through and when you pull don't pull it so tight that you're going to ruin the tension. Now the, when you go back I want you to try to separate some strands. So not just go in between strands but actually to separate plies and stuff. It will be a lot better because it'll be harder to get out. It's harder to weasel out when you start separating plies. And then finally the third time is the charm of going back. And so that's how you're going to do that and the starting strand that I had you just throw to the back side you're also going to do the same thing of just weaving in the tails so that it's completely gone. 
Okay, so um, what I want you to do is continue to attach your six together. Once all six, then you'll attach your um, your last one to the first one to create the center ring and that's where I'll pick you up next. So my motif ring is now done. You can try it on your head, see if it fits. Uh, mine is a nice snug fit. I'm actually really quite happy with it and we're gonna put this aside. I still have some loose ends to worry about but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that later and right now we're gonna go and backtrack in the pattern and we're gonna go and start and do the top of the hat. It is the, what do we have the top and we're gonna be starting and I will begin that journey in just a moment. So let's begin using the same size hook that you decided for this as we continue. So we're gonna pick up the pattern right here on page number one starting at the top. Um, you can do um, a chain four to form the center ring if you would like to. You could also do a magic ring. You can decide what you would like to do and we're going to begin that journey now. So listen to my instruction. We have a chain four, slip stitch in two to form a ring and then you can start. Or if you prefer not to have a hole in the center of the top of your hat, you can do a magic ring. So just to do a magic ring, just leave the yarn in front of your hand and go over two fingers and yarn over like this. Okay, so in front of your hand, we have slower tutorials available on our YouTube channel if you need it. And once you cross over, you're gonna go under the first one and grab the second and just chain one to lock and then you can move your hands out. When you go to crochet, you wanna crochet over both of the strands at the same time so that you can pull it shut. So let's begin and we're going to start the first round. So even if you decided to chain four and join to the first one, you will have that as well. If you did the magic ring, you've already chained one so you're just gonna chain two more only and if you're doing the regular one, you will chain three after you did the slip stitch to the beginning to begin. This will count as one double crochet. So now you've gotta apply nine more double crochets into your ring no matter which style that you're doing. So we can count those out together so we can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So with the chain three that you started with, so count that one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten is the right number. I want you, if you're doing the magic ring, just pull on this just slightly and just join it to the top of the first one, that chain. If you're not sure, count it back and I always count back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Count back to the tenth one and join. Once you join, pull a large loop and let's just put the hook down. Turn this upside down and that strand, I want you to continue to pull on it tight. And I need you to grab that tapestry needle that we've been working on, working with. And on the back side here, just continue in the same direction from which you were coming from. So we were coming around so we can pull it even tighter. Now if you split plies and stuff, make sure that you don't go to the good side of the work. So when you turn it over, you should not see that hook or that uh, needle. And that was the second time and finally the third time is a charm. Make sure you take your time. Um, magic circles do follow it if you don't secure them good enough. Once you're happy with that trim, let's put this back into the hook and now we're gonna continue the pattern going around. In round number two, we're going to start and I'm going to show you a cheating technique that is done and it helps to avoid seam lines. You can decide to do it if you wish once you see it. So you're gonna chain three, that will be your first double crochet and you're going to in the same one that you've done the join, double crochet again. I missed it and I kind of went between the posts, that's why I pulled out. So now on the top of the next one, there's going to be two double crochets in each stitch going around. So I want you to do that and I'm gonna show you a little technique at the last one and what you can do if you don't like the look of a seam line and I'll be right back in a moment. So continue around. So I'm about to do the tenth stitch. So let me show you. So if you do the tenth one and it's the last one and you join to the top of the first chain three, watch what happens. This is normal. This is part of crochet. 
And what happens is, is that you end up with this gap that will appear. No matter what you do, it'll show. So what I'm going to suggest to you, if you would like to use this technique, it's not written anywhere, but it's just my own idea that I do. And I double crochet, because I have to put two into the same one. So I put the first double crochet in. And I'm going to use this space as a, an anchor point. So I'm going to do a two together double crochet using the first stitch that I'm supposed to be using and the second leg of the stitch will use the space that's not a stitch. So this yarn over going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. Go into the space and what you're doing is you're creating that last stitch to be a little bit wider so it fills in those holes that you would normally see. Once you have the three loops, pull through all three and then join. And once you do that, you're not changing the stitch counts, but you're filling it in so you never see the hole. And let's move on to round number uh, three next. Let's begin round number three. Chain up three, that's your first double crochet, and double crochet in the same stitch as the join. Now, the next one is going to be one double crochet by itself. And here's your sequence going all the way around. So the next one has two into the same stitch. And then the next one is one by itself. And I need you to repeat that sequence around and I'll see you in the last stitch and just show you my little cheating technique that I use one last time before moving on. On the last stitch it's just one single, uh, one double crochet by itself which is fine but I'm gonna use my cheating technique so I'll use that one and then I'll use that space right here to make a two together double crochet and it will still only be one stitch but then you have that extra leg that will fill in any gapping space that will provide a nice solid join. Let's move on to round number four. Let's move on to round number four. I'm no longer gonna show that joining technique. I'm just gonna do it and I'm gonna give you the instructions and then I'll see you on the next round. So you're gonna chain up three and you're going to double crochet into the same stitch as the join. Now this one, the next two will be one double crochet by itself. Okay, so then the repeat pattern for all the way around is two into the next one and one double crochet into the next two by itself. And please do that all the way around for round number four. Okay, just finished number four. Let's go on to number five. Chain up three counts as a double crochet and then the same one as the join, double crochet again. So the sequence for this one, the next three will be by itself. So three double crochets on, on their own. So one, two, and three. And the sequence again is a two into the next one and then the next three are by themselves. Please do this all the way around for round number five. Let's continue to number six. Chain up three counts as a double crochet and double crochet into the same stitch. Over the next four stitches are gonna be by themselves. So we have one, two, three, and four. Okay, so the next one is two into the same one and then four by itself and please continue that sequence around. Finally, last round, number seven for the top. So you're gonna just chain up three, one double crochet into the same one. The next five will be by itself. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then the next two, or sorry, the next one has two into the same one and then the next five by itself. Please do that all the way around for round number seven and I'll be back to confirm with what, what to do next. I'm now at the end of number seven and I'm just going to join. And I need you to stop now here and I want you to pull up a long strand that you can at least sew this to that motif ring that we've already completed in today's tutorial. So don't be too generous with the strand but uh, just get that done and what we're going to do is that we're going to revisit that uh, motif ring again and we're going to begin. So just leave this aside and we'll be back to deal with this later. Let's pull up that magic or that motif ring next. So here is those motifs that we talked about and there is a total of six of them that form this ring that we have going on. Now what I want you to pay attention to is that there is a total of 12 
of these double crochets that are in each one. Six times twelve from what I did my long math um, is seventy two. But we only need seventy single crochets around. So what I need you to do is that when you're working with this ring that we're going to do for the upper and the lower part of the ring is that at some point you just need to skip one double crochet twice. Okay, so when you go to start and what I would ra probably recommend is that when you go to start probably skip one right close to the top, uh, the start and about halfway around skip another double crochet and that will bring you back to the number 70 is what you're asking us to do. So let's begin to do the top edging and then what we do in the top you'll do on the bottom as well. But on the bottom once we do that we don't wanna fasten off. So let's begin. I'm going to create a slip knot and we want to work in both loops on the top edging. So it doesn't matter which side you turn it and what I have is that these loose ends that I have I'm going to crochet right over them so they get hidden. We're gonna start in the first double crochet of just any one of them. It doesn't really matter and you're going to go right in the top and I'm gonna show you a standing single crochet. So once it's already in the hook just yarn over and pull through that stitch. You have two loops. Pull through the two. That's a standing single crochet. As I promised you we need to get to 70 single crochets around. So what I would recommend doing skip the next one so that you can say that you skipped at least one on this side and about halfway through we're gonna skip another double crochet there and those will give you the number 70 when you come all the way around. So we do wanna verify that. So skip just the first one that you're gonna go out and then just go to the next one and crochet right up over top of the strands. So you're just gonna focus on the double crochets only. Don't focus on the joining at all. So we're just gonna work our way across. Once you just bury in your tails long enough. So those tails that I have just kinda hanging off I'm just gonna bury them as I go as well. It saves sewing later. And if you prefer to sew then that's up to you to decide that for yourself. So there's the last double crochet of this one. So I want to jump to the first double crochet over here. And make sure that when you jump you kinda pull things tight so it pulls it together. And then continue just with the double crochets. And as I said about halfway through you're going to wanna skip a double crochet. So in this case just kinda fold it in half where I started and so right about there somewhere I'm going to just skip a double crochet so I can keep my number to 70. So please do this around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming back around to where I started and this will be considered the top. Okay and I've jumped over my two double crochets like I was supposed to and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning. Just pull things nice and tight and this is going to be the end of this one. So I do wanna fasten this one off and I want to just sec secure that into position. Okay, so I'm just gonna weave it in and I'll take care of that later. Any loose ends that you decided to cover over as you went across that round if you just peel it back you can just safely cut those as well. So I'll be back in a second we'll do the bottom part of this ring. So now this was the top so it was here we were crocheting along. Now I turned it over. This is where I did the join so I wanna make sure I kinda keep it in the same spot just for ease. And I'm just going to join with a standing single crochet in the top of the first double crochet that you'll have. And again crochet up over top of any uh, ends that you have. So a standing single crochet. So I'm gonna skip the next one just to say that I'm gonna skip there and then about halfway through I will skip another one on the other side and get myself back to the count of, t of 70 all the way around. So please do this. At the end of this round we're not gonna fasten off but we're gonna continue to the brim after that. So I'm coming all the way around and I'm going to join it. I'm gonna take care of any loose ends that I have but I do not wanna fasten off because we're gonna continue to the lower part of the brim next. So let's start the brim. We're going to chain three but watch what we do. This is part of the brim. So we need to form the line that creates the brim. So in the same one of the join but don't go into the same stitch full stitch. Just go into the back loop only and double crochet. It's going to create the line to bend it for that brim. In the next back loop only and only use the back loops for the remaining of this round you're just gonna put in one double crochet in the back loop. Here's the sequence to take you all the way around. The next one is gonna have two double crochets into the back loop and the next one is just one by itself. 
please do that same sequence of two and one all the way around. I'll be uh, back in just a moment. I'm coming around on the first round and I can still treat the last stitch which is next as that joining technique that I showed you. So just going in and making two together just to kind of hide in that spacing that happens when you do that. Okay, so nice and tight, right? So now we're going to move on to round number two. In round number two, just chain up one and just start with the next stitch and just apply one double crochet in each stitch all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment and we'll start round number three. Let's move on to the third round. We're going to chain up three and we'll double crochet into the same one as the join. Now we're gonna double crochet into the next two. Just use the regular loops. We're no longer using back loops and just once those two are done the sequence is there's two into the next one and then the next two are by themselves. Please do this all the way around for round number three. To conclude the brim we're just going to chain up three and just apply one double crochet in each stitch all the way around and then what I need you to do is just join it and then fasten off. I've already shown you how to do that and then we're gonna go back and circle back to the top of the the motif ring and apply the top of the hat to this section. So I will see you and just finish off round number four and get ready for the top of the hat next. So you probably have tried your hat on and mine fits really quite nicely actually. So if you didn't really want a top on because I do see that on vacation where people do just want a brim but they don't want to cover their entire head. That's kind of an option. Now I'm putting on the strand that was leading to the top of the hat and I have matched up where the seam line is on here so that it follows it all the way completely up. Now when I go to do this I wanna go into the back loop like we talked about before and we wanna pull that and then match the back loop of this one. Okay and we are gonna do a whip stitch. Now because you have 70 all the way around the top of this um, ring then when you jump to the next one you have 70 also on the top. So everything should match exactly as is and if not just improvise and just figure it out on your own. You don't need to message me on that and just whip stitch everything together and I'll be back in just a moment. This shouldn't take too long. So I've now sewed and whip stitched this. I've almost played yarn chicken with how much yarn I had left over. Almost kind of scared me a bit to be honest but I still have more yarn on my yarn ball so it's all good. So on the inside I wanna tie a knot just to secure it. And then the remaining yarn that's left over I wanna just do my magic trick of just gliding it in this to the yarn stitches. Don't go on to the good side of the project. Just stay inside the stitch work and just glide it through. Ideally it'd be nice to go back and forth three times but I don't know if I have enough yarn to do that. But you know what? It's gonna be good. It's already tied into a knot as well. So this is it. This is the end of the journey. This is the Flower Power Crochet Bucket Hat and it's actually really cute. Um, really quite happy with it and this is the end of the line and we'll see you again next time and uh, please enjoy these free patterns from Yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.